progress. Patient number 89 appeared apathetic post-surgery. With the removal of the amygdala, the patient no longer babbles like a madman about phantasms or strange beasts. Our hard work will not go unnoticed, my dear. For far too long, we've been cast at the side, Elizabeth. Our research was mocked, and our studies were overlooked. They'll see. In time, they all will. The human mind is still an uncharted sea, despite our advancements, Abraham. Those who doubt us should be thankful that for the first time in history, we have a facility willing to treat the darker corners of the human condition. The amygdala looks charred, disfigured from years of madness. How strange. Just looking at it makes me feel sick to my stomach. Is it glowing? What the hell? Hey, Archivist. I heard the director over the speaker. Have you started packing for Bryson City? Uh, I'm just a bit uneasy. The director wants us to go investigate some hundred-year-old asylum in the middle of nowhere. Who knows what could be out there? If atrocities weren't bad enough, there could be some sort of serial killer. I prefer just staying in my office, archiving. It's literally in my name. Hey, at least it's not Rockwell Forest. And we're lucky that we get to go on another mission. They've had us isolated down here for weeks. Yeah, I guess. Have faith in yourself, Archivist. You'll have the rest of us to help you along the way. You're not alone in this. Who is that? I'm not sure. I've never seen his face before. Does he have a dog? 
We can have dogs in here? Of course the director would. But fear not. The research continues. We get closer day by day, I'm sure of that. We can only... Ah, archivist. Scientist. Do you have everything packed, boys? Yeah. I haven't seen you around here before, sir. My name is the Archivist. Nice to meet you, young man. My name is the Patriot, and this here is Sagan. <coughs> She's the most loyal emissary we have. Did you start recently? <laughs> oh, no. I've been around almost as long as the proficient has. The longer you spend time in the crypt, you'll realize there are more emissaries than meets the eye. Yes, the Patriot here belongs to a unique division of the department, specializing in specific research. President Alexander Scott has labeled it the Starstone Division. Those agents tend to stay in their corner of the crypt while we stay in ours. Specific research on what? That's classified. So classified, in fact, that even I have no idea what they're conjuring up over there in the research hall. As long as President Scott deems it to be secret, it shall remain so. It's for the good of the American people. But I must not take up any more of your time. Good day, gentlemen. Best of luck in Bryson City. Not too often do you see the Patriot come out of his hole. I haven't seen him in months. What it am I? Let's focus on the task at hand. Have you downloaded Roosevelt onto the traveling device archivist? Yes, sir. We're all done and ready to go. You ready, boys? It's a nine-hour drive. Drake Asylum, eh? Never heard of it before. There was this wealthy family, called the Drakes, that used their monetary gains to treat the sick and mentally diseased. Rumor has it the head of the family, Abraham, let it get to his head. Physical treatment wasn't enough. He began dwelling in the hypnosis early forms of lobotomy. You wanted to peer into the literal mind itself, into the dark abyss of the human psyche. What the hell does any of that have to do with the atrocities? Well, you see, the patients at Drake Asylum weren't your average lunatics. Rumor has it they were special kind of, uh, deranged. Were they... husked? Did they have unholy insight? That's the idea. The Drakes tapped into a branch of neuroscience our greatest scientists and doctors were unaware of. Bryson City became a stain on the nation, and it was abandoned, written out of the history books. The townspeople made sure that whatever the Drakes discovered there was kept there. What happened to all of their records? What about the patients? Nobody knows for sure, but the public shunned the Drake family for their malpractice. Everything got shut down. Jesus. So, all of Bryson City is a monument to their failure? Essentially. Roosevelt, do you have a map of the asylum grounds ready? There's the main hall, which we are about to enter. This contains the offices in the main lobby. There's the west wing where most of the patients were kept. There's the east wing where the patients were taken to be studied most notably by infamous physician and brain surgeon, Dr. Lawrence Hartman. Finally, there's the north wing. What goes on in the north wing? I am not certain. There are not many documents pertaining to it. All I could find was an incident report from the late 1800s indicating an immediate shutdown of the building. It appears to be out of commission. Interrogator, investigate the west wing with the scientist. Navigator? Take the archivist with you and uh, check out the east wing. Roosevelt and I will take the north wing. Storm's going on. Let's head to the side. The conditions of this place were horrible. Changed. Shackles. It's right up blood and human waste. <coughs> Ugh, the smell is god-awful. There's some paperwork here. Let's take a look. Finally, something in my department. A 
This place hasn't seen the light of day for decades. Tread carefully, proficient. I'm detecting a massive amount of husk energy within the vicinity. Must be what the director was talking about. Might be originating from this wing. What in that? Oh dear God. Hmm. Lots of talk of lobotomy in here. Various regions of the brain being removed. Seems like Hartman was a close friend of the Drakes before this place got shut down. What else does it say? It says here that they hired Hartman to do their dirty work, because nobody else would disgrace their ethics like that. The Drakes believe different regions of the brain held different types of power. The amygdala encompassed fears and nightmares. The Drake family was under the suspicion that the brain held the power to manifest nightmares into reality. Sounds like a bunch of hocus-pocus to me. I wouldn't go so far as to say that, Navigator. The husk stage is known to affect our brains in strange ways. That is true. Here's some information about the North Wing. A lot of it has been redacted. Hmm. Let's see... Hartman's files say the Drake's dabbling with brain matter established contact with a higher plane of existence. Or rather, beings from said plane. Beings? This is... This is too much. The Refission needs to see this. <sighs> Proficient! Roosevelt! Archivist. What are you doing here, kid? I came here to warn you. Of this. I was looking through their old files. The Drakes took in Hust patients, and once any atrocities became visible, they caged them alongside the humans. The North Wing became their dirty secret as a house something far worse than the mentally insane. That's not the only thing. Come here. What is that? Roosevelt's been scanning it. It appears to be a void, a gap in the fabric of space-time. Where it leads, we do not currently know. What comes out of it, we don't know either. I'm detecting an unbearable amount of husked energy emitting from it, which must be what the director referred to in his report. The asylum grounds have been abandoned for decades, but someone had to have kept these atrocities contained. Or something. Emissaries, this is the proficient. Everyone made out south of North Wing. What the? You are a fool, proficient. To venture into our domain. The Omen. Wait. I've seen him before. Uh, in our files, back at the crypt. Yeah, we had a couple run-ins with him several years back. What are you doing here, torturing these atrocities? Was it you who opened up this void? Sustenance, newcomer. We seek that which nourishes us, what shields us from what you call death. I've seen that one before, too. The Forefather. Who are the rest of you? What's your purpose here? We are the pantheon of diabolical. The next stage of evolution for the atrocities. There's myself, the makeshift king. The omen, defiance, the forefather, and Megamorath. Gone are the days of being feral creatures. We have become more. And as we have become more. We require more. It appears having a large amount of atrocities centered in one location enhances the husked energy tenfold. The Pantheon seems to be using the Asylum as a breeding ground to amplify their strength, gathering husked energy as they see fit. On the brink of death we stand. Harvest this energy, or doom is at hand. But those atrocities being tortured... Since when have your kind ever cared for atrocities? Well, your little atrocity farm is doing more harm than good. 
had started seeping into the other towns. Which now makes it our problem. Everything is going to plan, Proficient. For eons, I have watched species of atrocities rise and fall. I declared no more. We will become the masters of this dimension and beyond. All of existence will bow before the Pantheon! From the lowest pits of the abyss, our influence spreads like a glorious cancer. We will be stopped. God damn it, all of you will. Proficient? We need to alert the others. I don't think so. Bowman, throw them into the void. Let them witness the horrors of the abyss firsthand. Uh, uh, get off me. Proficient! Contacting the director. Contacting the director. First Drake Asylum. Then the rest of the cosmos! Kid... Kid! What happened? My scanner says we're still in the asylum. That's impossible. It looks different. F feels different. Using my better judgment, it appears that we have made our way into the abyss. The? Abyss? Is that supposed to mean something? According to our documents back at the crypt, the Abyss has been mentioned throughout several of our cases, leading us to believe it serves as the domicile to the atrocities. This place is wrong. I can feel it in my bones. Deep down in the marrow. These lands aren't something humanity should gaze upon. This is not just a carbon copy of the asylum, but a mockery of what we know it's the universe. Our home. Uh, feels like I'm dreaming. Uh, I feel woozy. Mega Maroth did say they wanted to turn the universe inside out. Picture it as a piece of clothing, say a shirt. It has the same shape when turned inside out, yet is ever so slightly different. No man, emissary, or machine has ever gone this far, gentlemen. We are beyond the confines of what we constitute as creation. We wander blindly into the dreamlands, cut off from the surface. Harbin's office had a bunch of information in it. Documents, film reels, audio tapes. Let's double back there. The audio tapes have been damaged by the elements, gentlemen. I shall try my best to restore them. Playing now. The first symptoms in each patient are always the same, apathy, hair loss, mania. Then come the later stages, hallucinations and delirium. Ungodly creatures terrorizing patients. Patients went so far as to gouge out their own eyeballs to make the vision stop. Mr. Drake says there's a deeper meaning to it all, but perhaps there was a truth to these phantasms. He encouraged me to go deeper into the cerebral, to truly understand the human mind. We removed a disease section of the brain, the amygdala. It reacted accordingly to these abominations, the lobotomies worked for a time. But having so many of these sick individuals concentrated in one location, having these devils wander into our domain, broke down the fabric of reality. We tried destroying the amygdala, but they were as hard as diamonds. Despite burying them outside, the terrors persisted. The horrors of the North Wing drove the drakes to an early grave. Sickness plagued the family. Abraham wouldn't give up despite being on his own deathbed. I admired his efforts. He became a hollowed husk of his former self, babbling into the late hours of the night, picking the disease skin off his face as well as other forms of self-mutilation. It was then I realized this would soon be the end of us all. I must take my leave from this place, for there are secrets in this universe that man should not seek out, for it will consume them into oblivion. The more they research the patients, the more of them they let through. So much hust energy caught the attention of the Pantheon. Now they keep it running like a goddamn sweatshop. Humanity's morbid obsession with the unknowable will be our demise. 
Perhaps the Amygdali can transport us back into our world. They were instrumental in opening the void to the abyss. We can hypothetically reverse engineer a way back. Buried outside, eh? Let's take a look. Something tells me whatever the Drake family discovered in this asylum was smuggled out and adopted by the Astral Brotherhood. The Astral Brotherhood? What makes you say that? There have been reports on Whidbey Island of lobotomized bodies washing ashore. And all the victims were missing their amygdala. Too weird of a coincidence. Whidbey? Whidbey Abbey, where the compendium was found. No, uh, Whidbey Island in Washington State. Home to the Astral Brotherhood Temple. Crazy bastards over there. <laughs> we aren't alone. The Defiance. Got a feeling we're about to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the Pantheon. Roosevelt, do a scan. Roosevelt, archivist. Hello? Show yourself. It wasn't their fault, you know. Who's there? Show yourself. It was yours. What the hell? You spent so many nights pondering what you could have done differently. Who are you? Why have you taken my appearance? I'm you. The veil hangs thin at the asylum. Thoughts and fears personify. I'm part of the darker side of your psyche. The bits you keep hidden away from the rest of the world. The parts you refuse to acknowledge. So you're an illusion, is it? Or are you an atrocity? If they were still here, what would they say? What would they say if they saw you? Now. Dad, where are you? How could you let us die? It wasn't my fault. Always pushing the blame on others, instead of taking responsibility. You were weak then, and you're weak now. What kind of man doesn't save his own family? Get out of my head, damn you! You can't run from what is inside your head. Take a look at yourself. You're getting old. You can't keep this up much longer. You know it. And the director knows it. Proficient? You know, this wouldn't have been such an issue if you weren't so scared all the time. Who is that? Don't listen to the voices, archivist. There's nobody talking. Roosevelt? Roosevelt, do you copy? He can't save you, and neither can the proficient. You're some negative, right? Some atrocity, uh, toying with my mind. Congratulations to the Archivist for his fearless leadership in the fight against the atrocities. I'm you if you weren't a coward. I now appoint him head of the emissaries within the DOA. You're always running away, always wanting to hide. The proficient saw potential in you, but if he saw how you've been acting, the needless anxieties you've had, he would be ashamed. Even the scientist is tired of hearing about your fears. When are you going to finally grow up and get over yourself? Shut up. They're going to put you right back into that crummy office of yours after tonight. Or better yet, they'll fire you. Because the man... No. The boy who is supposed to stop the monsters can't even do that. What good are you? Why are you even here? Leave me alone. That boy needs a reality check. I wanted you to be better, kid. I gotta get back to the archivist. Uh, he needs my help. You've grown attached to the poor boy. The coward. He's no coward. He's a better man than me. You'll lose him like you lost Olivia and Abigail. Because you aren't strong enough. <laughs> Archivist. 
You were right. Uh, what the hell happened? They're toying with us, kid. We're their playthings while we're in here. We need to find the amygdala to get out of here. Uh, where is... Uh, here? Are we even in the United States anymore? Which one were you again? It's hard to keep track of all of you. So many goddamn names. That doesn't make it any easier. are of no use. Get off of us. Oh, my head. Oh. At least we're somewhere more hospitable. We have to get a move on. Roosevelt, do a scan. We appear to be in an English countryside, sir. Where are we now? Is this some sort of naval vessel? I think I know who we're up against next. The Omen can manipulate the world around him. And others' perceptions. Don't touch anything. Why is it so bright outside? Sir, if my analysis is correct, we are no longer on Earth. We appear to be approximately 3.19 billion miles from home, on the farthest outskirts of the solar system. But it can't be that bright outside. Not this far out. Let's look out this window. Salacium. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I've never been in space before. Uh, proficient? I, I feel sick. Look at me, kid. We're gonna be all right. We... Has he not told you of our adventures here, Tarkovist? What trouble have you caused since we last met? Last time I saw you, you were sucked into a third unilateral nethergate. It's been years. For you, proficient. Not for me. Your band of agents couldn't contain me in that nethergate. Therefore... I was free to slip through the cracks of Foundation and travel the cosmos to the furthest reaches of the universe and back. Your civilization's most difficult equations are my most elementary of pastimes. Due to the Drake Void, I was able to jump time streams, escape the confines of this universe, and project to others. I journeyed to the Genesis Point universe and met with our God and Death incarnate. I turned omniversal supercrusters into grains of sand. I even summoned enough power to create my own universe, filled with catastrophe and cosmic anomalies alike. A wonderful, in fact, one of the little buggers from there managed to escape. Did you enjoy his visit to the crypt? What? During one of my notorious adventures, the makeshift king made his presence known and recruited me to the Pantheon. I should thank you for all this, proficient. We will stop you, Omen. You are powerless in this domain, emissaries. You are in the realm of the gods now. The hull has been breached. The hull has been breached. Ejecting all passengers. Ejecting all passengers. <laughs> Cosmos. Oh. Roosevelt's offline. 
The Hust energy has fried his circuits. I might be able to get him online, but it's gonna take a few minutes. And we'll be next. If we don't get to those damn Amigdali. Let's go. You all right, kid? Yeah, I... It's just... When we were being confronted by Defiance, I saw someone that looked like me, but wasn't me. I haven't had much time to process it, but he said things about me. The same thing happened to me. It was like my bad thoughts came to life. My regrets, my grief personified. Yeah, it kind of struck a nerve. Because I've never talked to anyone about that stuff. I only became an emissary because I had been scared my whole life. Of the future, the unknown, the unseeable. Now, with being part of the department, I can see into the unknown. I can literally see the unseeable. How does that make you feel? Honestly? No different. I lost my mom at a young age. Dad was absent because he drank too much. I thought it'd be therapeutic in a sense. To get out there and face those fears directly, but... It hasn't. I'm just... Still me. Scared, cowardly me. Constantly trying to fix myself, but... It never works. I'm still... Just me as well, kid. After 20 years, you think I'd have a different perspective. But it's just that. It doesn't change you. It just makes it a bit more bearable. And you know what? That's okay. There's nothing broken with you that needs to be fixed. Maybe if your dad was around more often, he would have reminded you of that. I wish Mom could see me now. She would understand that I'm at least trying. I wish my girls could see me too. Wherever they all are. Just know they'd be proud of us. No matter what thoughts you may have or what hardships you go through. Have faith in yourself. You're doing one hell of a job, son. Thank you, Proficient. It's James. James Hawthorne. But, sir, uh, the rules. We must use our code names. How to hell with the rules. There are bigger issues at hand. Nice to meet you, James. Samuel Carter. All right then, Mr. Carter. Let's go find these amygdalae that Hartman buried before it's too late. I'm detecting high traces of husk energy in this section of the ground, sir. The source and the result of the forbidden knowledge. What the hell has it become? Different parts of the brain hold different kinds of power. Gentlemen, are you sure you wish to proceed? If you handle these, the effects may be disastrous. You know what I always say. Secure the future, or die trying. Try. Help. I have many names. Four feet and grand. Brinker of family. Harbinger of war across the land. No matter the conquests or battles I've met, for you'll know me by one name. Death. Rest of the emissary? We have to get back to the... Profession. I can't. Fading to a dreamless oblivion, you fool. 
before you reach the cosmos end, and that be so cruel. No stars to guide you, no light to rule. In this eternal night, you've lost your final duel. <coughs> just hurting humans. Think of all those atrocities. Don't they deserve your spoils? They're unevolved. Insignificant. When the makeshift king finally grants us sustenance after all these trials, we will finally become nourished, free from the shackles of mortality. You mean, he's been harboring it all for himself. He hasn't given you any. All in due time. You fools. He used to see of you. He used you to go to the asylum so he could get all the hushed energy for himself. Once he does that, there won't be any need for you anymore. I refuse to believe this! All those years wasted. All that suffering. Just to appease one atrocity. One atrocity to rule them all. He takes the best parts of individual atrocities to build himself from the ground up. A makeshift king indeed. This... cannot be. All of our hard work. You all got the short end of the stick. Now, I'm not one for working alongside the enemy. But let's make a deal. You help us take down the makeshift king in all of his unholy glory. You keep the hus energy for yourselves. One condition. You stay the hell away from our world. You leave our people alone. You hear me? Consider this the beginning of one. What do you say? Venture into the outer world. Spread like a wild fire. What's he doing? If enough of your kind become husked, he will dominate the planet. What's the plan, sir? We can't stay here much longer. We have about... Uh, 20 minutes maximum before our vitals start rapidly depleting. Mega Morath and the Forefather work on closing the portals. While Defiance and the Omen distract the makeshift king. You and I will kill any hostile atrocities attempting to stop us. What becomes of us after, proficient? Remember what I said. You can carry out the rest of your lives in peace. Just stay the hell away from our planet. Let's go. Your reign of tyranny ends now, makeshift king. You have made fools of us. What is this? Betrayal? No! Get back! You fools! You... You will 
you basked in the glory of unlimited nourishment, we starved. It belongs to us now. You will suffer the same fate as the Drakes. In shadows consumed, where darkness weighs. Good seeing you again, sir. How long have I been out? Uh, sir, you've been out for about seven weeks. What the hell? We almost lost both you and the kid. I'm afraid that Roosevelt is unsalvageable. Sam, but the, the archivist, is he all right? He's going to be just fine. The scientist has been looking after you both. Those board portals open all over the planet. Thousands perish, but... They're all shut down now. You saved billions, sir. I didn't do it alone. The kid told us where you both went. What the hell happened out there, sir? Uh, the usual. Men in black go and save the day. Atrocities are defeated. The world is safe. All in a day's work. Uh, all right, then. But what really happened? A lot. How you feeling, sir? Just fine, interrogator. I'm glad to be back. There's a special guest out in the main room waiting for you and the archivist. Special guest? My fellow emissaries, the hopes and dreams of millions of Americans continue to be protected thanks to your valiant efforts. That's President Alexander Scott. Mr. President, it is an honor, sir. It has come to my attention from the director of two emissaries, the profession, the archivist, nearly gave their lives into protecting the security of not only the American people, but the people of Earth. Is that correct? It's all part of the job, sir. You two descended into the depths of atrocity madness, and you made it back in one piece. This abyss was also sealed off, further protecting Americans from any unwanted anomalies. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed, men. It is with great pleasure that I can award you two with the highest honor that I can bestow, Emissary Valorous. Thank you, sir. This is incredible. Thank you, Mr. President. It is with great sadness that we lost a fellow emissary in the field. Roosevelt Mark II. But we must pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and begin anew. I want the scientists to start working on a new Roosevelt Mark III immediately. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Now you must excuse me, gentlemen. Freedom calls our name. I must take my leave. Keep fighting the good fight, and down with the Astro Brotherhood! America salutes you!